There's been a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fifth Seal, episode 16. I'm your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. The Fifth Seal is a podcast I do to bring awareness and prayer to our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Every year I count down the top 50 countries on Open Doors USA's World Watch List. From January through October, the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month, I count down from 50 to 31. Then throughout the month of November, which about 12 years ago I dubbed to be Persecuted Church Awareness Month, I count down from 30 to number 1. It is a countdown, which is why the episode numbers go backwards. You are not going crazy. Today's episode 16, yesterday was 17, tomorrow will be 15, on until the end of the month when we reach episode number 1, which is the worst country in the world for Christians to live in based on the persecution they endure because of their faith in Jesus Christ. So that's a little background. <clears throat> excuse me, for those who are new, every day this month, this is the first time this has happened, every day this month I have had either a new subscriber to the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube or a new member at the Fifth Seal page on Facebook. I also believe the listening to the podcast, audio podcasts are going up. That's all thanks to you guys who are here, who are sharing, liking, commenting on these videos. That makes the algorithm send it out to more and more people who are apt to join us in prayer. Also, those individual invitations that you're sending out, inviting people specifically to um, the Fifth Seal page on Facebook is a big one where people are getting invited by other members. So I sent out invitations at the beginning of the month, and then you guys have invited everybody that has come since then. So again, I appreciate all of you who have joined me every day this month and who have invited people to come along and enjoy and join us as well. So all that being said, it is Tuesday, November 15th. And this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This from persecution.org, International Christian Concern. 20 Congolese Christians were killed and several others kidnapped after the Allied Democratic Forces struck the village of Kainama, Beni Territory in Nord Kivu on the night of October 4th. The bishop of the Beni Anglican Diocese confirmed the attack, terming it, quote, a devastating occurrence that continues to bleed off hope that the Democratic Republic of Congo has been praying for, unquote. Among the 20 people beheaded was Sobu Mundeke, an, ev an evangelist with the Anglican Church of Congo, who had traveled to Kainama, Kainama, Kainama to look for food for his displaced family in Beni. One of the first responders to the attack in the early morning of October 5th was Venerable Jean-Pierre, the arch Archdeacon of Kainama, who reported to ICC. Quote, it pains me to inform you that we have lost 20 Christians of the Ban Banande Kainama camp and our evangelist Sobu Mundeke is one of them. Their bodies are lying all over and houses have been burnt down by the ADF rebels. Sobu arrived last week from Beni in search of food for his family. Little did he know that he was coming to be killed. We have also confirmed that other people are missing and we know they have been taken away by the Muslim fighters, unquote. Sobu and his family were displaced from the same area on May 28, 2022, after the ADF militia group raided the Christian village of Vito, killing 16 people and torching 10 houses. They went to live in Beni town as, an, as internally displaced people, where the ICC team met him in June. He was depending on well-wishers for his family's upkeep, and so he thought that going to the rich farming area of Kayanama and coming back with food would save his 13-member family. This time, he did not make it. The ADF Islamist militant group has continued to stage attacks on Christians in Eastern Dominican Republic of, or Democratic Republic of, of Congo. 
ceaselessly leaving behind a trail of unfathomable losses from killing innocent Congolese believers to destroying shelters, food stores, hospitals, and vehicles. Their aim is to impose Islamic rule on the Christians, and this is this they do will do by violating the freedom of worship of believers in order to cause fear and recruit more people into Islam. After Sobu survived the first attack, he disclosed, quote, I heard them, they were shouting in Arabic and Swahili, saying that the Kafirs, non-believers, should be killed, all of them, and make Congo an Islamic state, shoot all of them, kill all of them, and burn their houses, these notorious Christians, unquote. The Bishop of Beni has recounted a total of 50 deaths to the atrocities of the ADF terrorists since the beginning of this October. Quote, we are losing believers almost every night, savagely slaughtered or shot dead by the Muslim rebels. We do not get to know all the cases, but we can verify that since the beginning of this month, 50 have been killed and tens taken away as hostages to serve the rebels in their camps inside the forest, unquote. He continued, quote, in the Ruwenzori sector on the night of October 1st, they killed 11 people with several cases of missing people. Again, on the night of October 2nd, 19 people were brutally killed and others went missing in Mambumbe, Mutue, and Mangaza and the local locality of Ma- Mamove, Oricha. And then on Tuesday night, October 4th, they massacred 20 people in Kainama and, others, and several others are reported missing until now, unquote. These recent attacks have instigated a massive exodus of the displaced local population towards the supposedly secure towns of Erengeti, Oicha, Beni, and Kasindi, leading to an influx of venerable women, children, and men requiring huge humanitarian aid to avert their already deplorable situation. Um, This is just another tragic story of things that are going on, Islamic oppression in these areas, DRC, I I think I've already hit them on the world watch list. I think they were like number 20 or something, somewhere in there. Um, But again, it's supposed to be a democratic republic. There's supposed to be religious freedom, but these these Islamic rebel groups, fundamentalist groups, I don't call them extremists because they're following the fundamentals of Islam, are continuing to raid uh, the villages and the towns where our Christian brothers and sisters are living and massacring them um, with with no regret. So continue to pray for the families, the Christians in these areas. Pray for the family of, of this uh, evangelist. Let me get back and get his name one more time. Uh, Sobu Mundeke, pray for his family, the 13 members that are left behind in Bani, that they will be provided for, that God will take care of them, that God will bring comfort. God will use this situation to draw others to repentance and faith, even those members of the ADF uh, forces, that they would come and repent and put their trust in Christ um, and be saved and pray that God will be glorified in all of those things. And that brings us to our world watch list country for today, which is number 16, Maldives. Uh, some facts about the Maldives region is Asia. Asia, the persecution type is Islamic oppression. The main religion is Islam. The persecution level is very high. Population of Maldives is only 466,000, of which there are only a few hundred Christians living there. Uh, government is a presidential republic, and the leader is President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli. What does persecution look like in Maldives? Government officials in Maldives proudly emphasize that the country is 100% Muslim. Locals are on the watch for anything that deviates from Maldivian belief, particularly conversion from Islam to another faith. Conversion will be reported to Muslim leaders or authorities. Non-Muslims can also lose their citizenship. For those reasons, being known as a Christian is so dangerous that there is no ability to meet as a fellowship community, which means that whole families may be Christian without ever knowing the rest of their family shares their faith. This lack of Christian support stifles believers' spiritual growth. While Christians live in Maldives, they are mostly from India and Sri Lanka who have come to work in the tourist industry. These believers are also watched by authorities, making it difficult even for even foreign migrant Christians to fellowship. And although the Islamic culture is ultra-conservative, even more Muslim extremist groups have returned to the country, placing Christian converts at further risk. 
The level of pressure on Christians remained very high this year. Converts have no space at all to live out their Christian faith, and expatriate Christians, often migrant workers, lack possibilities for worshiping together without fearing arrest and deportation. The new government, which took over in mid-November of 2018, has made no tangible improvements as regards freedom of religion and is more focused on internal political struggles. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many Christian expatriates returned to their home countries. However, with the gradual opening up of the tourist sector, sector, they are slowly returning to the pressure cooker of the Maldives. Who is most vulnerable? Made up of nearly 12,000 islands just southwest of India on the Indian Ocean, Maldives is a luxury destination for travelers around the world. To avoid international scrutiny, persecution takes place outside of the islands reserved for international tourists. At all times, any believer who is converted from Islam is in imminent danger of exposure and punishment from both the state and their community. Some prayer points for the Maldives. Uh, pray for believers in Maldives who must sustain their faith in isolation and secrecy. Ask God to fill their hearts with, his se with the sense of his presence and care. Pray that President Soli and his government would soften their stance on Christians and other religious minorities as they realize that diversity enriches the country's national culture. Ask God to guide and protect expatriate migrant worker believers as they interact with tourists and Maldivian residents. Pray that they will be salt and light that draws people to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this time we have to come together to lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in you, Lord. Father, we thank you that you have provided for us a platform uh, through social media that we can come together across vast distances and even across the span of time as so many people will be watching this video later today or even days from now and listening to the podcast later, um, but yet still joining their voices with ours as we lift up our brothers and sisters who are persecuted because of their faith in you. Lord, we lift up our, our brothers and sisters in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We pray for uh, those specifically in this area, recent uh, these recent areas of attacks so through the month of October. We pray for the family of Sobu Mendeke. Um, and that you would provide for them, Lord, that you would bring comfort to them in the midst of his death um, and the deaths of these other Christians. We pray for their families, that they would be comforted, that they would, their faith would be strengthened, that their faith and resolve to stand firm in the gospel would be firm, Lord, and that you would, uh, again, be glorified in that, that you would use their, uh, their willingness to endure persecution because of their faith in you because of the gospel of jesus christ lord that you would use that to draw others even those who would persecute them we pray that you would draw even members of of the adf to repentance and faith and that they would come to know you and be saved lord and that you would be glorified in that we pray for our brothers and sisters in maldives lord we pray for those who are are believers in secrecy, Lord. We first off, I pray that you would you would provide people who would be able to come alongside of them, and whether in in secret or in hiding, or somehow the iron could sharpen iron. That you would raise up leaders that could uh, disciple these these believers in this area that are doing so in secrecy. I pray that they would have access, find access to Bibles, um, and God, that you would just help them to grow and mature in their faith. Um, we pray that you would, they would know that you are there and that they are not alone, that they are being prayed for. We pray for uh, the migrant workers in the area, Lord, the, the, the Christian migrant workers, that you would give them wisdom as they interact with other Christians in the area and also the tourists in that area. Father, we pray that, that you would give them a boldness, um, that they would somehow be able to even, even just boldly proclaim the gospel, even at risk of being arrested, deported, um, or losing their jobs, Lord. I pray that, that they would be bold, that you would raise up bold evangelists in this area, um, that they would call people to repentance and people would hear your gospel and by your spirit that they would respond in repentance and faith. And Lord, we do pray for President Soli and the government there that you would move in their hearts, that they would soften their stance on Christians and other religious minorities, that they would, uh, that they would uh, um, make less that they would remove, repeal the restrictive laws on, on religion, um, that they would encourage religious freedom, and that, uh, that your kingdom in that area would, would blossom because of it, Lord. 
And again, we pray that you would be glorified in all of these things because it is for your glory and in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you guys again for taking the time out to join me. 10 to 15 minutes a day to uh, become more aware and lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Christ. If you know anybody who would be willing to join us, please invite them to come to the Evangelical Norm Network on YouTube or uh, the Fifth Seal page on Facebook. Join either one of those places, or if they don't have time to watch the video, they can go anywhere they get their audio podcasts, Amazon, Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, the list goes on and on. Anywhere you get an audio podcast, search for the Fifth Seal, you'll find us there. Download it, put it in your earbuds, take it with you, join us as we become aware of what's happening to our brothers and sisters around the world, and then to lift them up uh, because of the the persecution that they endure because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. Until tomorrow, Soli Deo Gloria.